Welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching and welcome to the Living Masters series. Since I began the Masters series, I always had in mind that I would eventually turn it into a space where I would interview living masters from all walks of life. I will continue to cover case studies of masters who have crossed over, but in addition to that, I will be doing these interviews. And today we have a very special guest with us. I'm going to introduce him now and read out a brief spiel on the many amazing things he has done. We have with us John Unal. Now, John is a corporate trainer, lecturer, leadership plus mindset coach, and psychotherapist. He has successfully developed corporate well-being programs for some of the world's leading organizations, including the HP, the Australian Counseling Association, Queensland Police Service, Toyota Australia, the University of Queensland, and Volvo Group Australia. Most recently, John has been part of a global alumni team coaching executives for MIT's Professional Education Division, wow, there's a lot here, <laughs> and for the University of Chicago Booth School of Business. As of right now, you are the first Master of Starlight, and of all these many impressive titles, my favorite one is that you are my friend. Welcome, John. Welcome to Masters of Starlight. And we are having tea with John Unal. I've got my tea here. <laughs> Got my tea. Thank you, Swati. So good to be here with you and everyone else who's, who will be joining us um, along the way. So thank you for inviting me and I, I'm honoured to be your first guest on, on the show. You are indeed my first guest. You are also, if you may remember, one of my very first three subscribers, you <laughs> and Alex and my friend Jenny. Isn't that amazing? I started this channel with three people <laughs> and here we are today. So it has grown. Yeah. Um, now, before I, I just want to say, well done on growing your channel. By the way, I know it has taken a lot of effort and a lot of dedication and hard work. So I just want to say thank you for doing what you're doing and and bringing that wisdom to everybody yeah. who's tuning into your 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 teachings. Oh, it's been yeah, it's been a journey. I've loved it, and I'm loving doing it. I'm going to keep going here. It's so much fun. Now, as with all the masters, one of the things I like to do is show a little bit of the chart. And you've so kindly said that we can have a look at your chart here today. We'll have a cut down version. I won't share the whole thing, uh, but, you know, we can see just some of the basics here. We can see the ascendant. We can see the sun. We can see your moon here. Uh, you've got this, you know, wonderful humanitarian moon you've got an Aquarius moon there Aquarius is very much the humanitarian the one who really you know cares about other people will go out of their way to look after people to coach people you've got so many great attributes in here the one thing that I wanted to share the most was of course this Ketu placement here in the 12th house all this incredible spiritual wisdom that you have clocked up over so many lifetimes. You are now bringing that into the world here in the sixth house. We've got Virgo, you know, you're bringing all of that wisdom into corporate spaces. And really, I guess if I was to sum up the life theme as per this Rahu Ketu axis, you're really bringing order to chaos which is, I thought that could be a nice little starting point here for your career, but it would be great actually for the audience to see how it is that you came to be doing this work and what has your journey been like to becoming this incredible coach with, you know, all these in, impressive titles that I've just read out. How did you come to do this, John? What has been your journey? Mm. I mean, I like what you just said, order to chaos, because my life has been certainly chaotic from from the get go. Um, where like how it all started, and maybe just one thing that I like to share from the beginning is mm -hmm. that I just had this um, trust in a way that life will show me the path. I, when I look at my brother, he he knew exactly what what he wanted to do at, at high school. Like, like, yep, I'm going to be become an en en engineer, and and that's what he did. He went into the corporate world. He did really well. He's very successful. And for me, it was like, what am I going to do? Like, I had no idea. Um, so I I did a bunch of different things. I studied economics, um, which was fine. It just um, I just didn't like working with the numbers. But I complete my studies and. As life 
kept kept guiding me i started working as a tour guide back in the days this is this is like over 20 years ago and i was in 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 germany that's where i was studying so i started guiding tours i love people you know yeah. I, <laughs> and one thing that i you're everyone's yeah. friend. With that moon, you are everybody's friend. Yeah. 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 And I, I love that. Like, I, I thought I just got that from my mother. Uh, just mm. like that joyful personality that's like, yes, I just I just want to do something meaningful and, and light people up. That's And I bring that in in anything that I do. So um, started as a, as a tour guide back in the days, doing my studies, actually, and then got hired as a, as a manager when um, I finished my studies which allowed me to stay in Germany back back then mm -hmm. and then slowly transitioned into um, after becoming a German citizen um, the, the the world opened up to me and I ended up in Australia and I again had no idea what I was going to do I just had a suitcase and because I'm like okay let's try something new right Let, let's do something different because I wasn't very happy um, living in Germany at the time mm -hmm. I am uh, in Australia with a suitcase and life started to happen again. Like I worked in different jobs when I first landed in Australia, uh, but what got me into, uh, I, I somehow ended up in a recruitment uh, company <laughs> uh, because of a meditation that I've done. I met someone who knew someone in that company and that's how I actually ended up being hired. But I, I knew that I just had to do something with psychology. This was actually my first choice at uh, high school, and I wanted to study psychology at, at the university. But um, growing up in Turkey, my family was a bit like, and this is like, th uh, what is it? Yeah, 25. Like, I'm just giving my age, but 25 years ago, whatever. <laughs> I'm old. <laughs> That's all right. Give your age. We're, this, we're roughly the same. Anyway, yeah, and yeah, I, I wanted to study psychology because I was always interested in in how we operate, like mind, body, spirit. Yeah. But the resistance was it's like, what are you going to do with that? Like, this is 1990s. Like, are you going to be unemployed? And then, so I was like, okay, maybe I should do something with economics, right? Like counting the money and and this is what everybody does right like the the people who are successful classic kind of please the parents stuff do them yeah totally, the economics totally. and the stable job and, yeah, and the know. business and yeah <laughs> and I'm, like I, I thought I should be an investment banker right earn a lot of money and yes, get the prestige yes. Yes. Well, me too. I've thought about it too. I have no talent for it, zero. But like I've sometimes wished that well, I have all these creative ambitions and ideas and things I want to do and but like I wish you know would life have been easier if I was just yeah into numbers and investment banking you know yeah. sometimes I think that it probably would have been easier but I'm not sure if it was uh more conscious that that's that's one thing that I you know it's it's not a success story it's like because the question is how do we measure success like and I think it's it's the wrong question. Like, are you really happy with what you're doing? Are you enhancing your level of consciousness and supporting others uh, doing the same? Um, and not so much how much money you're making or what is in your bank account, uh, because it is it becomes irrelevant. Um, you know, Swati, that I recently lost my mother and uh, three months ago, and she didn't get to take any money in her bank account. Um, but all she well, she uh, her legacy was really how she touched people's lives, yeah. and over five hundred people showed up in her in her funeral, yeah. uh, who were genuinely touched. Uh, they were crying. They were, um, yeah, they were very emotional. And this is really what made me realize it's not about the bank account, the titles, or anything else. It's really how we show up in each moment as a human being, and touch someone in a, in a meaningful way Definitely. Um, so that's what i'm contemplating recently but coming back to many years ago now um so recruitment i'm in mean, recruitment i just don't like it it's just such a high pressure job and sales and i'm like oh i can't do this and uh, i go back to school to study psychotherapy and this is in my 30s and i love it i really love it we're sitting in group therapy i'm learning so much with like we dive into like Freud, Jung, and all the all the masters, and 
and, and then what like and part of my journey is also mindfulness like I started practicing mindfulness over 17 years ago and the reason why that happened was because of depression right? because I got maybe you you've seen that in my chart but I got such an overactive mind yes. and, and Saturn moon uh, that, and your moon is lauded by Saturn and that can be a classic thing of um yeah, I've got the similar thing. I've got Saturn Moon connection myself, and I've had depression yeah. too. Yeah, it's yeah. like this. Yeah, you can kind of go yes. down with that. Yeah, yeah, I can go there. Like my mind can take me to the sky or to the to the realms of hell, <laughs> depending yes. on which way yeah. we look at it. Yeah. So, in in at age twenty eight, I did my first vipassana. It was like a ten day silent meditation retreat, and this really brought up. The, the notion of wow there like what is this mind uh, how do we how do we cultivate mindfulness how do we become more present mm -hmm. and a part of me always knew that I just wanted to combine um, this work with corporate work I didn't I didn't know how I was going to do that when I was in recruitment but this was I was listening to Dr. Wayne Dyer today and he talks about this calling so mm -hmm. I had this calling I was talking to my general manager and I said like hey I want People to, this is by the way, um, 2006, mm -hmm. 2007, like really early. Wayne Dyer was 2000. No, no, no um, I'm, 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 I'm just calling desire. Okay, yeah, yeah, calling yeah. desire with, um, I, I want to do this work in the corporate space and help people right. uh, to, you know, to have a better life. Yes. Uh, because it really helped me so much. Yeah. I had no idea how to do that, but I had this calling mm -hmm. desire and then I, go back to school, study psychotherapy. Um, I get married with my wife, Alex. Yeah. and That's how I know you, through Alex. Yeah. yeah, you know, yeah. I was trying to think, when did I meet you first? Because I know her from the mid-2000s, but I got to know you when the time you married Alex. So, yeah. 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 And, and, okay, so, I mean, we're just talking about 20-year time period here. Yeah. Um, so, and I'm still doing the work. I, I, I've started working as in a psychiatric hospital. I'm working with people wow. um, who are deeply suffering. I mean, I'm working with schizophrenia, uh, people who are hearing voices, I'm working with anxiety, with depression. Mm -hmm. And I kind of realized that we're not fully helping these people. Like this was a private psychiatric hospital. People come and go. It's like a revolving door. Yeah. I'm like, what are we doing wrong? Like they're, they're highly medicated and you know, it's like there, there's no agency for these people to actually take responsibility for their lives. Mm. Um, so then we become, by the time we become permanent residents of Australia, we say, hey, great, now we can go travel. And that's what we did. We basically sold everything yes. and, and did that journey around the world, which changed both myself and my wife. Yeah. And we like, well, when we get back, we were like, I, I can't do the nine to five anymore. Exactly. <laughs> it's just not, it's not possible. Uh, so we used to live you in found Sydney. Yourself. You found yourselves, who you are, you know, but yeah, I, I can't see yeah, that yeah. thing now. Yeah. yeah so I, I couldn't, yeah, I, I, my, yeah, my soul wasn't really in, mm -hmm. in alignment. Like I, I, the, I could go back to the hospital. They, they said, are you coming back? I'm like, well, no, I, I'm not. I just don't want to, A, I don't want to be in Sydney. The, the job was in Sydney. Yeah. And we didn't know where, where to go, actually. Uh, but we were traveling. So we went to Newcastle. We went to Brisbane. And Brisbane felt right. Yes. For some reason. I don't know why. Yeah. Again, um, I think all of these things are breadcrumbs. Like, if you're listening to this, like, what, what are the breadcrumbs that the universe is giving you that can help you to take that next step? Mm. because we may not know the entire journey ahead but there's always the next clue yeah. and if you just take that action take that next step that yeah. leads to something else and when I look back in my life like this is how my life unfolded like I actually don't know what I'm doing like how I ended up in here I, I like I don't know if you ask me like did I plan this like no no I didn't plan it it yeah. just it just happened yeah it just happened and I flowed the life um so then we moved to Brisbane. I start working as a um, psychotherapist, running um, circles in mindfulness, and a, a community starts coming together. And we were running this Brisbane mindfulness circle. It, it was free um, because we just wanted to give back to the community. And it started 
growing and growing and it became a 2,000 uh, people group. Wow. And around the same time, I'm like, I have this calling again. I just want to work with the organizations and bring this work into the corporate space. I don't know why. Again, that's a calling, right? I, I like this space. And and one of, I just want to say, what like, Swat is amazing. Like, I, I was having one of my first readings with her and she's like, the low hanging fruit for you is the corporate space. Is is that is that correct? Like I just yes, it was. You, I, just, you just said that. <laughs> I remember that phrase was very unusual because I never used that phrase and I don't think I've used it in a reading since. That was just for you, the low hanging fruit. And yeah, it was corp corporations. I could see that, that they're meant to be your clients. Uh, it, I know it's not on the little chart I shared, but I'm pretty sure your Saturn is in Leo. And so you will serve like the corporations who are the kings, the modern kings of today. They are the CEOs of big companies. So that, that was what spoke to me and sort of said that, yeah, this this guy needs to be working with corporations. Like I, I just got this strong sense that, you know, and you could be working one-on-one -on -one with people, sure. But I just got a, a strong sense that you can do so much more and, and the horizon needs to be bigger somehow. So, I, yeah. yeah. I remember your reading. Yeah, and yes, and this was the journey and how it all actually started to happen is through a Facebook ad that I saw. Um, someone was looking for some mindfulness teachers and I applied. Um, and the person who was running this, um, Carl Baker, he he's the founder of Mindfulness Works Australia in New Zealand. Yeah. So we have this conversation with him. And I love that. I, I really love him. He's such a great leader. Yeah. And he created this amazing, incredible course that changes people's lives. Mm -hmm. And I started working with him. And through uh, through that work, um, the organizational side of things started to open up because they used to get a lot of inquiries uh, mm -hmm. from different organizations in all around Australia. And he would just send those leads to me. Um, I was based in Brisbane. So I started getting into corporate work and, and that just emerged in, in in a way that four or five years later I was my majority of work was corporate and and leadership development leadership coaching and um and then Easy. I saw another Facebook ad it's funny <laughs> like a friend of mine posted on Facebook not yeah. that I'm, I'm spending a lot of time on Facebook it was just no, no, these yeah, things yeah, come to me right the breadcrumbs <laughs> like I <laughs> you've got Kate doing the 12th there's some procrastination there somewhere <laughs> I'm kidding <laughs> Uh, so this this friend of mine uh, <laughs> who works in Bali at a university and he says that we're looking for a lecturer in leadership and coaching and or mindful leadership at the time and and I was like oh I can do that like I look at the job description I talk with my wife Alex and like would you like to go to Bali um, I was like yeah let's go like and this is during COVID right like <laughs> We don't even know how to get there. The, the country is shut down. So I apply, I get the job. And then somehow they got me over there. And that was just two years ago. We created some amazing cutting edge curriculum. I've been working with the young generations. I just love them. They're the Gen Z, like they're, I, um, I got such high hopes with these people. Yes. Um, and so we had amazing, amazing results and that was, I did that for two years and now I'm back to what I was doing, running my own business and collaborating with, um, you know, some incredible organizations such as MIT and University of Chicago. And they found me on LinkedIn. Like, again, I didn't really apply. They just came to me and it's like, hey, do you want to, there's a, there's a possibility. Would you like, would you be interested? Mm -hmm. And so when you ask me, like, how did you end up here? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> it just happened. It just, it's like, I don't know. It's taking one step at a time and, and being open yeah. to the next step and encouraged to take the next step. Um, yes. And having the trust, yeah. having the trust in, in life yeah. that I'm meant to be doing what I'm meant to be doing. And it's when the time is right, I will step into it. But yes, definitely. That's how it all happened. Amazing. That is amazing. Wow. And it's still evolving. It's still growing. It's still uh, but you are on this path now where you're totally passionate about what you do. You love what you do. You know, there's, I imagine that restless quality that you would have had in the economics 
you know, in, in that time earlier, that's that's gone now. That's that's long gone, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes. And it's always like this for me. Uh, what is next because mm. I kind of get like I can't keep doing the same thing like my work needs to evolve yes. and I get that some people are happy doing that like mm. and that's how they kind of must have have mastery over one thing but what I've seen so far in my own character or personality there needs to be um, evo evolution mm. like I cannot keep teaching the same thing I just get bored so I need to add I need to find new ideas new wisdom you know, create new frameworks, new modalities and, and put it out there. Yeah. Um, so that's, yes, definitely. And it lights up my soul. Like, yeah. honestly, like when I'm working with, like when I'm in front of people, when I'm sharing something, when, um, when I see that they're, they're getting it right. Like, it's almost like I see my role as planting seeds. Yes. I go into very left brain places, um, and plant some seeds so then they can actually operate from both parts of their brain right mm -hmm. the creative brain and their analytical brain and i don't like i'm not in charge of that i just spread those seeds whatever flourishes it's in it's in their own time yeah but that's how i see myself yeah definitely you mentioned um gen z and you mentioned that you love working with the young people today and I must say yeah the young people today they're incredible the, the, and I feel like mother nature is providing uh you know very sort of spiritually evolved young beings thank god because you know I think it's, <laughs> for the older people that we left a bit of a mess maybe uh what what is the difference between like in so in your work because you work with corporations I would imagine and especially the work you've done recently with MIT and Chicago Booth you know, I would imagine, I, are you working with some of the older people there? Like, what's the contrast between, uh, you know, some of the age groups perhaps that you've yeah. worked with? And, and what are you noticing about the evolution of, yeah, corporate life? And are we getting it? And are we evolving? And, you know, br bringing mindfulness to corporations. How is that evolving in the world today? Like, do you see it evolving? Yes, uh, that's a great question. And I definitely believe there's a generational difference. Uh, mm -hmm. So I'm a Gen X, uh, we're, we're Gen Xers. And yeah. I do work a lot with Gen X as well as uh, baby boomers who are just yeah. about to retire now. So uh, it's a huge, huge gap like in, in level difference. of consciousness. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, just massive, massive. Yeah. Like even our generation, right? Like we get into the, uh, the career and like, okay, don't speak up, like, just keep doing what you're doing and you just climb the ladder and yes. don't, it's like you know, it don't leave to, your role. To pay yeah, the bills. Yeah. yeah, keep them yeah. Keep yeah. Bills going, yeah. And the new generation, they, they're not going to put up with that. Yeah. So that's what I start noticing working with them in, in such an intimate way because we would have these young minds for eight weeks, intensive, like they would mm -hmm. come to class every day. And one thing that we did very well with them is creating a sense of psychological safety. Mm -hmm. So they felt that they can be who they are. Yes. And and they, I find them very brave. They're almost like fearless. Yeah. Right. They're, they're willing to do the work. Um, at the same time, you know, I think each generation has a, a positive and, and also like a, a shadow, yeah. so to speak. So the shadow for this younger generation is the resilience. Um, and they're, they're willing to just change work very quickly without putting the hard yards, right? So it comes, uh, I mean, it, it's, uh, it's, it's, not, it's... Not so much staying power, maybe, like as in, like, uh, they, they, not so much staying power, or they won't stick with something. Is that the shadow side? Yeah. The, the... Well, the shadow side is like, uh, first of all, I mean, Simon Sinek writes beautifully about uh, this younger mm. generation in his book, Leaders Eat Last, Mm. And he talks because the way that they grew up in terms of like using technology, they found it very difficult to um, deep, have deep, con uh, deep relationships with oh. one another. Right. Oh. So they um, so they rather ghost you. Like yeah. and I've been looking at um, statistics like some of them, they don't even show up to work. Wow. They get the job, but they, they just ghost to, to work. They ghost their friends like they mm. cannot break up with a because they can't have this difficult conversations, right? Mm -hmm. So it's easy, easier to just 
you know, <laughs> vanish yeah, yeah. and go someone yes. than to have a difficult conversation. So that is the challenge with uh, that I observe with this uh, younger generation. At the same time, the opportunity is that they're willing, you know, they're willing to do the work, they're hard workers, they're very creative, and they speak up. They are not going to uh, put up with, you know, toxic cultures or or things like that in the workplace. They, they're they going to leave um, within six months to a year, if if two years, like some mm-hmm. sometimes they, they stay around, but not yeah. not not like us like we're like okay you know whatever like it's it's my yeah, role i'll it's give it job. another I'm year kind of yeah that's <laughs> another five do. years yeah it's another gonna, five years yeah 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 i'm just gonna so retire good. soon like you know. so good. Yeah. yeah yeah i think yeah. it is good so they're more responsive they're more yeah they're not going to be a, what, a frog in a boiling pot of water or something they'll move like yes yeah. they they are sensitive and that, I suppose that's yeah. one, one of the criticisms has been like snowflake generation and this kind of thing has come about in the collective as well. But it's really interesting that yeah. you say that they, yeah. That, so the thing about not having the courage to have those face-to-face conversations, this did make me think about technology. You know, the rise of technology has probably eroded some social, you know, the face-to-face social interaction that, yeah, we grew up with like we, you know, yeah. you know like um, young people today. You quit. It's ghosting. It's like okay, just close the laptop lid and that's it. I'm done. Like that's how you end a relationship or end something, kind of thing. Yeah, it's amazing. It can be, yeah, it can yeah. be. Unfortunately, yeah, totally true. It's like that. I know in my audience, we're definitely going to have some people who they are working, and I've done a lot of readings like this where. Uh, a lot of my clients, they're working in a corporate space and they are wanting to, and, and these are gifted people. They've, I look at their charts and they've got all kinds of spiritual gifts. You know, they can they can do amazing things. And what they yearn to do is eventually leave the corporate job where they are and do something like what you're doing. Uh, you know, that whether that be working one-on-one with people in their practice, doing coaching or even you know having corporations as their clients one day in the future um but it you know I was wondering and I know we spoke about this briefly before where we were talking about well maybe people don't particularly have to leave what they're doing maybe they can be in their job and their career but be bringing some of their light worker energy to the space that they're in uh I know this is something that I think you help some of the top executives that you've worked with you're kind of helping them to bring more mindfulness more I suppose spiritual thinking I want to say to the place where they are so rather than thinking well I need to leave this and create something brand new how do people work in a corporation uh to is are there things they can do to I don't know change the dynamic bring more mindfulness to where they are what are some actual things people can do yeah great question i mean i believe there's always a choice and there's always opportunity right we all can do something Mm that's something that's different and i can relate to what you're talking about like the the workplace culture can be difficult and challenging and i experienced that in my own life um, recently with the university that i was in Mm -hmm. and and i also noticed like how did i contribute to that right? Like what was my contribution? Um, For example, there was a lot of gossip and um, yeah, absolutely. Like, you know, there was, uh, uh, university lecturers, they're all very sophisticated, serious people, you know. (laughs) No, we're we're talking about the leadership level, right? Like, Mm -hmm. so we have the lecturers and on top of the lecturers, there's the leadership and and general managers and everything else uh, who is responsible for, um, you know, the success of the organization, so to speak. Well, in a way we all are, but they're in, on the management level. Yeah. And like, I could feel the, um, you know, that the, there was so much gossip. I'm like, wow, this is incredible. <laughs> so, and and I start noticing like, um, I, I I had to have difficult conversations which I, at times I shy, shied away from. Yeah. And, when we don't have this conversation, what really happens, Swati, is this, these emotions of like frustration, anger, maybe sadness, not being acknowledged or recognized. 
they just simmer around. Wow. Yeah. Right? So the, the role of the leader is to have that safe space where we can talk and air things out when and and it's going to happen everywhere. Yes. Like I mean, we spend like more than eight hours every, a day at work. So someone is going to rub you off the wrong way. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. so you're going to project your, your parents. You're going yes. to have your family issues. You're going to have your sibling rivalry. You yeah. know, whatever your mm-hmm. past is, you know, whatever your spiritual growth is. And mm-hmm. it gives you a great opportunity to see, oh, like, I mean, why? Like, why I cannot, you know, have this conversation? And I was digging in, digging deep into some of my, personality traits and um i i just i just did a speech um on on this i'm just writing a keynote at the moment actually Mm -hmm. and part of this keynote is i identify these two different parts that i can play uh, like personas one of them i call it um dr jekyll the mr nice guy Mm -hmm. and you know the like I don't, people pleaser like I, yeah. I don't like the rock the boat yeah yes of course like let's don't make waves and the other part of the, the shadow part of that is uh, is Mr. Hyde right like he's this ex- <laughs> like angry beast who can just create a lot of chaos and danger and I just noticed part of me was like oper- still operating from that place of duality of and and I was not in charge there was um, there was self awareness, but it was easier for me to give in to gossip because it felt good, you oh, know. Yeah. When when yeah. we're when dealing with toxic environment, yes. it's like and it, it felt like I'm getting back at my manager or leader, and just because by participating in this gossip, and I know like we teach this, like we teach leadership, we teach mindfulness, we teach coaching. I know that it it is it it breaks the workplace. Yes. But a part of me was like, yeah, like, I know. I mean, it was so easy. It was just like, oh, I'm so, I feel relieved by doing so. So uh, the question is like, how did I contribute mm. to the toxicity? What can I, could I have done, could I have done better? Wow. Right? These are the questions that people can start asking themselves, right? How? What is my role? Yes. Why am I experiencing this? Is there a pattern that is repeating in my life? Yes. maybe um you know like i just had to look at it and i just had to say hey this is not okay i i want to be recognized i want to have this 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 and this and when i voiced that it was not okay by the university so i just had to leave and that's okay yeah. um yeah. but having this conversation really allows us to to speak up speak our truth and say this is okay, this is not okay, setting healthy boundaries. Mm. So each person, um, if you're in the corporate or any any workplace, really, mm-hmm. just think about, you know, in, in, in terms of conscious leadership, we talk about am I above the line or am I below the line? Mm. Like above the line is like I'm open, I'm curious, I'm creative, I'm willing to learn and grow. Nice. Below the line is the emotional mind is triggered, I'm reactive. Okay. I, I want to get back at you. I just want to be right. I'm yeah. gonna, I'm gonna do the gossip because it feels good. Like yeah. I'm just, I'm yeah. gonna, gonna sabotage <laughs> something yeah. because I'm below the line. I'm just very, very tribal. Like I yes. just want to get back at you because you're not. You know, it's it's so interesting these workplace dynamics. Mm. We often um, kind of project our parental yes. relationships with our bosses, don't we? And yeah. that's. You know that's not the place to work out your parental issues. Yeah. That's not the that's not the that's not the right place. Just, yeah. just do the work, yes. right? Develop your self awareness. Do other um you know things, coaching, therapy, whatever you need to do, and then you can move forward. So, I believe there's always things to do. Yes, um, I believe there's always things to do. And what I've seen based on my experience is my passion is now. One of the reasons why I work and want to work with the top people is that because they have the power to change this. Yes. yes. I, I want people to experience a humanized workplace. Yes. It's not okay to treat people like numbers. Yeah. I, it's not okay. We're, we're, we're human beings with a soul. Yeah. Right. We're evolving too. And I, yeah. Mm. yeah. And I've seen many people who didn't have the courage or the capacity 
maybe you got a mortgage so you just need to need that job they they couldn't really move out of this uh, toxic workplace culture and i know that they're getting eaten alive mm. so they're, they're, their light is diminishing their soul is just shrinking because yeah. they're in this toxic environment yeah. and um so you know that that's what drives me like how do we actually make the workplace a more harmonious workplace where we can have these conversations where we can talk candidly about what is working well what is not working well mm. be, become more emotionally intelligent when we relate to each other yes. so that's what drives my work but to come back to your question what can people do i think people need to maybe ask themselves the question where am i at on this journey like am i above the line am i below the line am i emotionally triggered do i have this toxic residual that i haven't worked with and that, that's mm -hmm. slipping into the workplace right mm -hmm. it's impacting yeah. the way that we show up and people feel that yes people feel that yes. we're, we're energetic beings right yeah. when you walk into a room people will feel it right Absolutely. if Every you have a grudge has, yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, if you have a grudge with your boss, mm -hmm. guess what? That person is going to feel you. Yeah, and guess why not? You're not getting a promotion because you're having all this, all these emotions. Yeah. Um, but at times, I think also people need to understand that uh, maybe the environment is not going to change, so it's time to leave. Yeah. So do I then have the courage yeah. to either you know have a roadmap or maybe getting a new job? Yeah doing something a bit different do i have the courage to step out yeah. and know that that it's in in alignment yeah. with what i need to do yeah so these are the things that come to mind so yeah. if i choose to stay in the workplace yeah. what can i do to change it mm. if i choose to leave do i have the courage to to leave and do i have the trust that it's going to be okay yeah absolutely courage is wonderful i remember this is reminding me of when i was finishing my time in my corporate work. I worked in advertising and the universe was just slowly kind of weaning me off jobs. Like it was giving me, so I, yeah. I was on full-time jobs and then I became a contractor and I was doing those full-time. And then gradually in the last two, three years before I started doing this work full-time, the universe would just give me like a contract where it was like, I would think to myself, I need three days per week. And the universe will give me two days per week. And so then that ended, ended up turning into two days per month. And I'm like thinking, what, how can I, what? Like, but it, I was being weaned off uh, while this new thing was cranking up. So yeah, for me, it was um, pretty interesting. I felt like I needed both courage and backup plans as well. Backup plans is a good thing. And yeah, if you've got, I've got a very supportive mom who sort of encourages me to, pursue what I want and she says you know if you need help I can help you you know type things so that's been amazing I mean I couldn't couldn't have done this without her support and her help um but yeah it's been wow yeah it has been a journey I relate to so much of what you talk about as well with the whole um people in the workplace trying to resolve their emotional stuff with their co-workers I remember working in one ad agency and in one studio where we had a designer who everybody wanted him fired, including the creative director. Everybody wanted him fired. And I remember thinking that if I was the CD, would I, I'd, I'd want to see if I could manage him, actually. Like I'd want to see, because I don't think the solution is always just firing everybody because then maybe you just attract another one of the same. Maybe the challenge is, okay, how can I really, you know, manage this person or how can I work through this? Have, yeah. and I suppose um, you may have had to do some troubleshooting with some of these executives. Have you had to do a bit of that where there are difficult situations and you've had to kind of step in and suggest some things or... Yeah, yeah, I imagine there are some there's sort of like sort of rock and hard place. You're in a stuck between a rock and a hard place. What is it? Some of those situations, I would imagine that you'd be great to come in and sort of bring space. It's like that mindfulness thing. It's like bringing space into the situation. Maybe people don't have to be fired. Maybe things can just be transformed. Oh, absolutely. Like I believe there is always a solution, but it really comes down to 
I, I was reading this book called Tribal Leadership by Dave Logan, and he talks about five levels of leadership. And the first level is, and I'm basically giving you a very short summary of like what that each level looks like. Yeah. Uh, the first level is life sucks. Yeah. You know, yeah. this is what this is the mindset that we experience with, for example, gang members, people who end up in prison mm. and things like that. So that's level one. I'm, I'm guessing none of us from like the audience will be in that state. Mm -hmm. um, and number two, le level two is my life sucks. Like you may be in an organization, you look at your boss, he seems to be having a great time and you're like, oh, like my life sucks. Like why is this coworker or my leader is having a great time? Now, level three leadership is I'm better than you. Wow. That's very yeah, ego. So and that's very third that is, Yeah, that's yeah, very ego. That, and, and surprisingly or not surprisingly, uh, according to research by this book, 75% of the workplace is in level two, level three, right. you know, 75%. That's why we're experiencing all this like chaos and toxicity and yeah, dehumanization, right? Like, okay. because a lot of people, a lot of our leaders are operating from this, like, I need you. We, I keep you in level two so mm -hmm. I can actually profit from your work. I can maybe, you know, I need to, I need to look good right yeah. in front of other people yes yes yeah and so that's that's level three that's very common right that's Better very common and very, I'm oh, very talk common. To, oh man talk to I, that. I worked with so many yeah. and, and advertising as well you can imagine like. yeah <laughs> yeah big one big one <laughs> who, who has the biggest ego yeah. now level four is we come together as a team mm, and yeah. uh, like it, it, it's it's really about we're better like it's almost like um we're better better than ibm or microsoft or like we were together born we're bonded as a team as an organization but we're still like in that game of i'm um, but we are better than you yeah type of mentality but we work together as a team and there's also and we're all on the same one. side isn't it we're, we're yeah all we're all we're all together as, as a group yeah. as a team yeah. yeah and level five is like i don't care <laughs> who else is out there because we are on a mission mm. to make an impact we're gonna we're on a mission to change the world we're gonna do something amazing like right. this is when you start thinking about apple like apple doesn't really care who their competitor is yeah right? they don't yeah and that's why they're so creative because they don't have because they keep innovating some yes. new technologies yeah they don't care what microsoft is doing or what ibm is doing they, it's like hey yeah like well, our game is we just want to provide this mm. a unique experience to our clients yeah. right wonderful so that's five levels and mm, um now the, the danger is that like all of that is requires self-awareness right you just need to know where you're at on this so it starts well, with le level of self-awareness yeah and self-awareness takes yeah. you up through the, up to number five. Would you say that there's a correlation? Yeah, there? it can. It's not so much the awareness, it's your life experiences. Like something happens, you start questioning. Yeah. You start reflecting why everybody's leaving my organization. Mm. Like what, what is it about my leadership that no one is sticking around? Yeah. And if, you know, a level three leader doesn't really want to look at things so so that the, there was one quote in that in that so but if you have a level three one and two down they want to keep you yeah yeah totally like, like the, the, the yeah. minions right? level yeah. one level two they just do the work don't they're, rise they're up minions, like, yeah. 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 yeah don't yeah. rise up i'll just put yeah. put you back to your place now the danger with that is if someone is not aware is not able to see this mm. and you go and say that hey you're a level three leader uh, here is a book they yeah. probably will fire you okay yeah, so. <laughs> yeah this is difficult being a coach actually how do you yeah when you're dealing with a really massive ego it's like <laughs> yeah th that's a tricky yeah. thing how do you well, very I mean, diplomatically sort of help them come to where you are like yeah because yeah. a big ego I mean as a coach you know. I don't have like I have the luxury to get paid to speak my opinion right like I I will call them out Good. okay hey, you'll call them do out. you actually see yeah yeah totally i mean that's my role brilliant, brilliant. right I'm, my role is to actually hey do you see what's happening here yes. what are you noticing yes like raise that awareness so that they can actually start seeing the impact that brilliant. they're doing 
Really? And I mean, worst thing that can do is they can just fire me. Like then yeah. I get another client. That that's okay, right? Like I'm not I'm not working with them. I'm not stuck in that in that system. And that gives me as an outsider to actually look at what is happening in the organization or you know with the leader and and work with that person directly. So then they get to understand their impact. Yeah. And most of the time they're not aware of it. Right. Wow. So it's not that we're here yeah. to blame them. They just, they yeah. don't know. Wow. We don't know what we don't know. Yes. So it's a game of consciousness. It's the, the more we raise the level of consciousness in each and every one of us, the more harmonious this place is going to, going to become because, you know, ultimately we're just going to go into that place of love, right? Like this is where we come from. This is the glue of the universe. Yes. And the, the level of consciousness is going to ultimately take us there. That's that's my vision. That's my goal. That's my hope. Yeah. Right. And we're on the way. I, I believe we're on the way. Yes, there's some bumps along the yeah. way. We just still have to deal with some crazy stuff around the planet. But hey, yeah. you know, it's a, it's a journey. Yeah, absolutely. It is a massive journey. This is amazing. I absolutely love this model uh, that you've you've brought out. That's incredible. Wow. And amazing as well to hear how you've dealt with some of these top people who need calling out and you'll yeah you'll go in there and do it that's fantastic that's how it should be because um yeah, yeah that's really really good not easy not no. easy like sh yeah. shadow work is, shadow that work is hard <laughs> yes it's really yeah. hard yeah and I, I think that's um but you're doing a superb job there because that this is the thing like and as you say a lot of these people they 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 are genuine and good people uh many of them they, they're just I guess especially if they're up at that baby boomer level or they're quite you know senior they've just they've grown up in the system they kind of are the system it's like yeah bringing yeah. A, a spiritual mindset to these kind of people is a task it is happening though um I was reflecting on this actually in advertising I remember they used to give us these kind of treat type days like where they would thank us for our hard work and um I remember like many years ago the options were you could choose between going on a paintball day and um the other option was I think it was some I don't know some sort of club or something and there was I just remember there was champagne and cake and I remember choosing that one because I didn't want to go to paintball. <laughs> but <laughs> I thought, let me go to the one that is the most relaxing. I went to that. But nowadays, a lot of these ad agencies, I was amazed to see this in the last agency I was at, the treat day involved a mindfulness meditation uh, seminar for you know a good few hours. That was a big portion of the day. So I was really impressed just to see that amount of evolution in my own life um yeah that like what is it you know what corporations consider a treat is actually someone like you you know it's like you would uh be there doing well you do far bigger things than just that but like um yeah I'm glad to see that you know that there is change that that this type of thing mindfulness trainers are coming into corporations now it's so needed uh, it wasn't like that. I and mean, you look at the 80s and the 90s, gosh, they, they, corporations were very different creatures back then. Now, oh, yeah, they were, they yeah. would laugh at us, right? Like, yeah. I mean, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. They would really <laughs> laugh. They would just like, what are you doing? Like, yeah. yeah. But I also want to say, like, you know, mindfulness has been the, the gateway or the doorway for me to step into the organizations, but that's mm -hmm. just a starting point, right? That's really the beginning because it gives us the self-awareness. Mm -hmm. um, after that, we need to look at the emotional intelligence, like how, how am I impacting others around me? This guides us to leadership development. Like, do I have the courage to, to act mm -hmm. and have these conversations um, how do I overcome my fear? Wow. Right. What are my values? Yes. What 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 kind of a legacy do I want to bring forth? Right. Yes. It's just mindfulness is the entry level. That's that's the, you know, it will give you the self-awareness and it will give you the opportunity to choose wisely. Mm -hmm. But um I'm just developing a, a 
a framework called SOL. Uh, so soul-based leadership. So S is self-awareness, O is opportunity to see the opportunity in, in the challenge or in, in, in anything, really. Yep. Um, U stands for unlimited courage. Right, nice. And I think this is the missing piece that, I mean, we can be self-aware, we can have a lot of the work done and i know many people who've done a lot of work like they've been meditators for 20 years and they they have no integrity i'm like how is that even possible yeah. right? like <laughs> what have you been doing have you been um, doing it wrong so, like yeah <laughs> so the courage or unlimited courage is like can i just stand up and even if i'm a, i may be the only person who's standing up yeah because i believe it is t- the true thing to do yeah Right? It's it's tough. Really tough. Yeah. It is tough. Yeah. Can I action on that? So that will that's something that will move the needle. And the last part, the last uh, section of the soul framework is love and legacy. Oh, Alpha love and legacy. Love and legacy. Uh, legacy. Gosh, love. Yeah. I mean, love is um, love and corporations. You know, when we look at the chart, that's kind of Capricorn. And the 10th house there and it's uh yeah it's a very dry part of the zodiac the word love never really happens in that part of the yeah. zodiac it's amazing and we do we need to bring love into this area um you know oh just amazing wow this is great john i think we are gonna wrap up in a moment i'm just gonna have a look at my run sheet here and just see if there's anything we haven't covered i know i've got the a little bullet point here on guidance on leaving a toxic workplace uh maybe we haven't covered that one so much there will be people who are kind of yeah in the process of wrapping up leaving do you have any final words on any of these topics actually um or on guidance on leaving a toxic workplace or any anything uh that we we've touched on today yeah, so what comes to mind, Swati, when we talk about leaving is um, can you leave in peace? Yeah. Right. Despite the fact what happened, can you take the good, what you learned, how you grew? Um, even like for me, it was like learning about, okay, this is not what I want to do. And that filled my passion to create something new. So what is the goodness that you're actually getting out yeah. of that workplace that you were in so not living in a in a way that that you're bitter because yeah. then you have to take this energy to the next thing that you're going to do yeah. can you really find peace and live with a sense of um you know closure like i think closure is really important you can have a ritual you like have these conversations one thing that i noticed that was missing the way that I left the university mm-hmm. was that there was not, there was no final exit interview. Like mm-hmm. it was just came to an end and I would have mm-hmm. liked um, to have, you know, spoken like here, here, this is what you can do better to right. keep your talent. Yeah. This didn't work well. And just even sharing this because there's, I got nothing to mm-hmm. lose, right? When you're leaving, you got nothing to lose. Exactly. Yeah. So some I, people attempted to burn the bridge, you know, tell them to. Yeah. Don't burn the bridge. Don't burn you know, the like, yeah. Take away the Unless you're working with narcissists, right? Like yeah, exactly. that, and then you may have to burn the bridge, right? Yeah, yeah. But I believe most people have, have a good heart, Yeah. but they just, they just lost in the way. They just lost in the system. So how can you leave with most ease and grace? Yeah. Just ask yourself and find that closure. And one thing, one ritual that uh, I do with my clients, this is from family constellations or systemic work, is you basically take what you've given. So you just say, mm-hmm. my work, like mm-hmm. all the things that I've done, like the programs that I've created, um, the hard work that I've done for you stays with you, with yeah. the organization. But I take my creativity. I take my... Um, I take my like whatever is that you 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 need for your next job. Yes. Right. Creativity, uh, life force, your joy, your aliveness. You take all of that with you, and then you move on. You step out of that um, environment. And I've seen some amazing result. Like a lot of people get still stuck. Like our energies get stuck in different um, different places. Yes. Like have a clean cut. Make so, sure that you do this in a conscious way. If you're leaving, 
yeah. close all your tie all your ends and and move out just take whatever energetically energetically right? so exactly just, brilliant it's yeah. like yeah it's like a, a sort of forgiveness as well like could be a word entering into that that you just yeah totally i mean so like it was it was what it was it was good for the time yeah and yeah, yeah. that's brilliant yes yes they um louise hay talks about this as well she talks about you know loving so loving the stepping stone that you're on and it's that kind of thing of um sometimes i mention this with clients that love the level that you're on and it will dissolve and the next one will open yeah. up so until totally. you love it yeah it's like until you love it yeah. it you're probably going to circle around in there for a little while longer kind of things and loving it can mean um saying no setting boundaries looking after you for a change so it's yeah oh absolutely mm. and in a way like that opportunity gave you like i look at my life right like working at the university although it was toxic yeah. i mean we call it toxic whatever yeah. we, you call it it gave me the next level right like now i get to work with mit and chicago booth but mm -hmm. without this without two years of hard work around this mm -hmm. that stepping stone as you as you call it mm -hmm. this wouldn't be possible yeah. so this leads to something else so it's just mm -hmm. step by step step by step yes. just don't rush it's your time is coming like whatever you meant to be doing you will do it yes and find the courage to step in when when the calling is there Amazing. don't 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 postpone it don't yeah don't ignore it be in Just the now yes yeah, step in be in the now so true wow yeah. that's amazing now john there are many different ways that people can get in touch with you we're gonna what i'm gonna do in the description below is i'm gonna leave the audience with a You've got some fantastic links here. I'm just looking through them now. We've got your website. We've got your free ebook, which I have just downloaded, and I am definitely going to read that. I'm really excited to take a look at that. Uh, we've got your LinkedIn profile here, your Instagram. People can follow you on there. People can find you on Facebook as well. And I'm really excited to share this one. Look at this, Meditations on Insight Timer and your course on Insight Timer. How cool. I am eventually also going to, uh, you know, I'm inspired by you. I might end up on Insight Time yeah. these days. I've got to get my act together here and, you know, but I will, <laughs> I will end up on there too. So definitely check out John's course on Insight Time. Brilliant. And your meditations. Um, and I do lives once a, once a month. So, um, and I, I'm pretty, I'm sure Svata, you'll be amazing on Inside Timer. You oh, need to be there. Yeah, you need to be doing what you're doing. Yeah. And um, so I do once a, a lives once a month. Um, so you, you basically can join me, wow. um, ask me any question on the chat and we just cover different topics such as like how to deal with the, you know, overthinking or emotional intelligence and many other issues that we, we cover. So amazing. Yeah. I am going to check that out for sure. That is so cool. Wow. Well, thank you so much, John, for being here today, for being the first master of starlight. This is amazing. I always envisaged, you know, eventually, yeah, getting around to starting the interview set. And um, if anyone's watched to now if it you know if people want to come on the show um you can even get in touch reach out i do have a couple of masters lined up uh in the coming weeks so who knows I, i'll figure out how i end up launching these and, and what the schedule is but now and then you know we're gonna have an interview with an amazing living master as we have done today thank you so much john and Thanks so much Swati. Yeah, what do you so mean? good to so good to be able to call you my friend. So oh, it's yeah. been such a journey. Yeah. Thank you for everything that you do uh, for the planet and and the level of consciousness raising it. So mm -hmm. thank you for your hard work and dedication. Yeah, thank you so much for that. It's um, I love this work. I'm glad that I had the courage. I must admit, the universe had to kind of push me a little bit. <laughs> so you know. But I'm here now and I'm doing the path and yeah, but it's, um, you know, and for me, it's been an inspiration to know you uh, as well and to see your journey and just touching on the chart, I might as well, because it, it, I brought up the chart earlier and 
you're starting your Mercury Mahadasha. And I'm about 14 years behind you. So, you know, when it comes to the Mahadasha sequence, right, here in Vedic astrology, you're you're ahead of me on the path. And, you know, I hope that by the time I reach my Mercury Mahadasha, who knows, I too may be able to, by then the world might be so evolved, you know, that we can bring Vedic astrology as a tool into operations as well. Uh, I think yeah. it would be incredible. So that is definitely something that I'm thinking about and working towards. I actually did have um, a little coaching session from uh, a business coach who's based in Switzerland. This is, um, yeah, this just happened, I think, a couple of years ago. Was it a couple of years ago? I was in Sydney. And we talked about this. We talked about the possibility of bringing Vedic astrology into corporations. And she said, Absolutely. Her assessment of me and my path and where I'm at, she said I'm probably about, she thought maybe five to seven years away. So who knows? Maybe it'll feature in, in my Saturn Mahadasha. Who knows? Yeah. yeah. So I'm well, totally I mean, inspired by you. I've, I've seen, I've seen you. Do, so yeah, yeah, I'll find the seeds. Yeah. yeah. I, and yeah. then be very clear. I think it's very clear for you where you want to go. So absolutely. Yeah. I think so. So, because I did used to contract myself out to companies. I used to enjoy it very much. I liked being part of a team. I liked going to the office and I did enjoy all that type of thing. But equally, you know, I'm very much enjoying my sort of hermit research mode, you know, coaching thing that I've got going on now. I'm loving this too. So, yeah, yeah. I guess I'll be shown. It, that, that's how it goes. Yeah, totally. I trust that you will find your path like all of us right like Absolutely. trust life and you'll be guided we all are guided yes and, like in each moment i think that's the yes. that's the message that i want to leave the audience with like trust yes. that you are guided in each moment yes and um, you may not know which action to take right now but it will be shown to you follow your calling and take bold action along the way Absolutely. Wonderful. Wow. On that note, I'm going to wrap up. Thank, Thank you, John. Thank you, everyone, for being here. And as always, I look forward to seeing you all next time. 